this world ain't right, won't accept it Negative energy, I expect it Once it's in your mind, it's infectious So fight for your life and reject it You better give me space, I'm protective My adrenaline spikes when I'm threatened and Someone in this place is a murderer oh. That explains the weight. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say this is why Salim was so concerned about showing us back to the park and go searching for a hospital. All the while keeping a lookout for Salim or pretty much anyone, since there's no telling who else might be involved. Probably be a good idea to fashion some kind of weapon cases like this one where cell phone reception's too poor to make a call and might still be possible to send out an SMS. What we do next depends on Jessie's condition. If she seems to be breathing okay, we might be able to barricade ourselves inside the hotel room and wait for a response to her SOS message. Otherwise, if her breathing seems labored or her lips are turning blue, we'll need to get help right away. But, that but just remember, funerals aren't all that cheap either. Getting back to Jessie, if we can't wake her up, I'd say that definitely lends credence to my suggestion that she might have been poisoned. In which case, not only do we need to get her medical attention, we also need to avoid the person who did this to her. First, it probably won't be very coherent, but they'll at least be somewhat responsive to external stimuli. On the other hand, if you reach the point of pouring, you start to seriously consider the possibility that something's gone horribly wrong. Based on my viewership analytics, I'd imagine a good number of you have seen someone passed out after a night of heavy drinking. If it doesn't work, we'll want to add light to the equation by shining our phone light directly into her face. Finally, if all else fails, we should try picking her up and dropping her back onto the bed from a few inches up. After all, it worked in Inception. Keep in mind that Jesse, in that case, I think the best course of action here would be to start getting our stuff together now so we could just drop our keys off to the desk and limp Jesse's ruby red box over to the next available image to lock himself out of the room without any shoes on. Awesome. Now, I don't know about you, but there's no amount of comp amenities that would make me want to stay the night it's normal for her to flip the f out like that for no reason. You'd think someone about to pop the question would find that kind of outfit concerning. And of course, David doubles down on his negligence by leaving Jesse alone cold in a matter of minutes, which would honestly make me wonder if they didn't slip something in all that free booze they were dishing out. For real though, David's nap starting to see why nobody stays here. Evidently, David is too. And that cop will know. What matters is that this place really sucks. The door stick, the owner's a creep, there's ghost kids bleeding off. Comes out of nowhere to tell them exactly that. Which, for some reason, means they have to return to their room right now. Or maybe it has something to do with the group harm and simply asking them about it in case it might affect our decision to stay. For example, they might tell us that the backup generator keeping the lights on right now could crap out of uh, Landlines are our only option. But once again, Jesse and David aren't worried about that. Instead of doing literally anything to hedge their bets against possible negative outcomes, they get themselves cleaned up and everything we went through with the ENT store creep who, by the way, is almost certainly the same person that spiked our tire earlier. We should probably let him in business. Whatever the case, Salim assures them it'll be fine, as the small number of guests they have tonight means he'll be available. In terms of logic, a big spoiled urbanite, they automatically assume any place without at least two major international airports must be like megaton leading them to stop at the first place they see, even though they both find it creepiest. As for the car, repairs will have to wait, according to the hoki for the night. Also, they call this place a ghost town, but if you ask me, it looks like a fairly modern and well-maintained get service. But I guess these people are both terminally online and tech illiterate. The perfect storm. Speaking of storms, one seems to be rolling in, which combined with the Jesse and David thought to do that beforehand, the rest of this nightmare would never even make the news. It's a tale as old as time. At any rate, despite the fact that they're clearly being targeted by someone with ill intentions, it seems the pair simply can't bear the thought.